much. How did Ben get owned? Mike from PA just thought it was a meaningless back and forth. It was. But that such is the nature of debates. So as long as you fluster your opponent, that's it. Put him on the back foot is, is, a, is a wrap. But debate perverts celebrate, you know? That's, that's it. He's basically stating, like, wokeism is just something that conservatives have created and cultivated. And I've only heard about it being described in the way that it's been described by conservatives. So, are your, do you come from Holocaust survivors, or are you a Jewish family that didn't? Uh, so, my great-great-grandparents arrived here. A lot of our extended family was killed in the Holocaust, but, but our army. Your great-great-grandparents, but not your grandparents. Pee. Right. Oh, I gotta do you have you friends whose grandparents were Holocaust survivors or anything like that? Of course, that? many of them. Yeah, I've written, I've, I've, helped, uh, I've helped write memoirs of Holocaust survivors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Their families are kind of messed up, right? Uh, like, my family is very messed up. I mean, if you they, go through they a teach, trauma like the Holocaust, they, I would imagine. They teach been. that trauma between generations. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, trauma very often in a lot of circumstances is passed down. I mean, I know some kids of Holocaust survivors who turned out fantastic and some who didn't. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So okay. you are officially woke. That is what wokeness is about. It's like, uh, you know, people's grandparents or their great grandparents were slaves. Well, it's okay. No, no, it's okay. Guys, Fuck I, you. I'm, I'm talking. Want, guys, I, I actually want to hear. No, no, I, want, I want to hear. No, this it's okay. Guy, it's okay. I, I, I want, I want, he wants to, I want hear to hear it. Let's at least hear the argument. Let's, okay, so let's, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Go. What? He wants to hear me. I do want to hear it. It's fine. Let him go. Let, let's come hear on. it. Come on. I'll just, you know, so I'm ex talking. explain come how on. that's woke. So, I mean, the whole thing is, is like, Oh, let's see. So during <sighs> Silent Cal, Calvin Coolidge's administration, do you know about like the great Mississippi flood back in the 1930s? I understand that American history is filled with racial evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that causes some intergenerational trauma, which affects people's ability to be, you okay, know, so let me, effective, let me, okay. things like that. Fine. So let me ask you a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, so if the idea is that history has consequences, of course that's true. That's not yeah, wokeness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is not wokeness. What wokeness suggests is that fundamental. So the, I got to run it back as I was peeing, but I mean, they start booing him immediately, right? Uh, I'll just, you know, so ex explain how that's woke. So, I mean, the whole thing is, is like, oh, let's see. So during <sighs> Silent Cal, Calvin Coolidge's administration, do you know about like the great Mississippi flood back in the 1930s? I understand that American history is filled with racial evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that causes some intergenerational trauma, which affects people's ability to be, you okay, know, so let me, effective, let me, okay. things like that. Fine. So let me ask you a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, so if the idea is that history has consequences, of course that's true. That's not yeah, wokeness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is not wokeness. What wokeness suggests is that fundamental institutions in American society are so... No, it doesn't. So, yes, I, it 100% does. Ran. I ran Elizabeth Warren's campaign. I helped organize her volunteers around here. Okay, to be fair, like, I, I, it's, you know, I would laugh at that too, okay? It's fucking Elizabeth Warren. But anyway, listen, you know, this is a well-intentioned guy, okay? So let's, let's give him the time of day. I am, I am a representative of wokeness. Okay, well, and that's just, I mean, this is all it is. Well, I mean, like, I mean, I, I, you know, I, hope I, that I don't get it. Warren and Bernie is the same team. This is why we lose. Yeah, no, totally. That's why we lose. Yes, you're right. Because people think Warren and Bernie were on the same team and Elizabeth Warren did not drop out and fucking offer full throated support to Bernie Sanders when it was very obvious that she wasn't going to not only lose, but even lose in her own fucking home turf, you know, and did it thinking that she would get a position in the Biden camp, okay? God damn, dude. I mean, it's the same thing that happened with Mélenchon in France literally just recently. It's always, you're right, it's always the same thing. If you have no realistic shot at fucking winning, then yeah, offer support to the person who is ideologically in your lane. But that wasn't Elizabeth Warren's point. Elizabeth Warren ran as a spoiler. Unless you mean, you know, that uh, this is why the left loses because, you know, they run as spoilers to other viable candidates on purpose. Biden campaign won, though. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Look how great that's been so far. And uh, look where Elizabeth Warren is on the Biden camp. By the way, I think this kid is doing a pretty good job of describing intergenerational trauma and systemic oppression to 
Ben Shibibo by using something that Ben Shibibo talks about and cares about. Some, a concept that he not only understands, but advocates for. Intergenerational trauma for Jews as a consequence of systemic oppression that they faced and continue to face, like remnants of uh, such uh, oppression. So he's doing a good job. Like, this is a perfect fucking way to craft an argument for someone like Ben Shibibo. Okay? Hey, when I uh, went to go get... He cares about racism, Lamau. Wait, who, Ben? No, he doesn't give a fuck about racism. Get the fuck out of here. But he, yeah, he cares about racism as far as he can be racist. Uh, within the confines of, like, acceptable public discourse. Yeah, he loves racism. He's like, huh, it's my favorite thing. I need to see it more, more and more <laughs> in my... Uh, movies. I love racism. <laughs> I want more of it. <clears throat> so it's great because he himself is Jewish as well. So Ben can't turn around and be like, you're anti-Semitic immediately. Like he literally hit him with the fucking, I have immediate relatives, like closer relatives than you that were victims in the Holocaust. Like he got murdered in the Holocaust. So he already hit that card on, he slammed the card on the table. Okay. And he was like, hey, what's up? And now he's going in for the kill by making an adequate comparison between black people and the systemic abuse that they withstood in the United States of America and how our systems were designed in a way to oppress black people and the outcomes of said uh, oppression and the intergenerational trauma in a way that Ben understands. So that's actually a really good way to fucking debate Lord a debate pervert, okay? So... Uh, you know, sh uh, hats off, shouts out to the fucking Elizabeth Warren campaign organizer, Andy. Very good. Get my first tattoo. I, I, the guy I, I, had lightning bolts and 88s tattooed on his neck. And as a Jewish person, um, that's really messed up. It's, so it's basically a threat. There are there are racist people. Now he's trying to describe that, like, you know, Ben should in a way that Ben can understand seeing remnants of that same kind of uh uh you know power struggle uh from the side of the oppressor in contemporary society is going to very clearly create an environment of hostility now the overarching argument here is most likely going to be around uh the overarching argument here is most likely going to revolve around why certain imagery in college campuses invoke feelings especially when uh the unrecognized trauma or the systemic abuse is continuing okay like there's a difference between like uh you know that's why you don't want to invite nazis to a college campus because when you invite a nazi to a college campus all of a sudden that leads to a less safe space for all of the victims the marginalized communities it's not just about the fifis okay of uh, Jewish people or uh, fucking, you know, trans people or black people or people just that do not fit the in-group that the Nazis are supposedly trying to defend. But it's more so the legitimate hostility in that environment when you legitimize the point of view and the perspective of a neo-Nazi by inviting them over to your college campus. Okay? And he's using that, he's using the neo-Nazi argument and the intergenerational trauma from the Holocaust and the systemic oppression that Jews have withstood as a way to basically draw a comparison for trans people and for black people. Let's continue. People ...who exist. The argument that you're making, and I'm going to close with this because this is going in weird directions and I don't really no, want to... No, no, no. It's going in a weird direction where Ben is literally getting fucking cumstered, okay? That's the direction it's going to. And not only that, but he's getting owned by, you know, a, a soft-spoken Warrenite, okay? A Radlib, if you will. Well, it's not I, I don't, I don't really want to get... No, just hold this up is, a second. I let, you, I let you get out your arguments, and that's, now it's time for me to respond, because I let you say Okay, I'll let you respond, but... No, I no, no, not but. Now's my turn. You, you are not characterizing but, what I'm saying accurately. Now, now, it's, now it's my turn. Your, your, yeah. your definition is inaccurate. The reason your definition is inaccurate is because any sentient human being would acknowledge that history has consequences. Right. But if the idea is, but that's not what wokeism is. Wokeism is a different thing. Wokeism suggests that all inequalities of today are attributable to not only historic injustices, but also continuing injustices in the now. And I've that never all heard I love, wait, first of all, Ben, Ben turns around and says, I'm actually going to redefine what you're stating by basically saying the exact same thing.
And so if you're going to rewrite the definition of a concept that you yourself came up with anyway, because like no one's like, I'm a wokist. You know what I mean? That's not a real thing, right? Why not just like make it look dumber? You literally just said every, every human being with a brain cell believes that systemic issues or uh, historic uh, precedents have consequences, you know? Historic precedents and like things that happen throughout history, of course, have consequences on human beings and the way that they live on a daily uh, on a daily basis. But wokeism is something different. It's when historic things have consequences on people that are living in the past and also people that are living in the present. That's different. It's like, well, no, you just you just basically repeated the thing that you prior you previously agreed on. Very strange. You could have done a better fucking, you could have crafted a better, like, weaker argument. If you're going to straw man your opponent, don't fucking, you know, don't go off and, like, uh, and, and admit that there is, uh, the argument is exactly the same. Anybody is describing to discrimination, like that, but a not just that injustices in the now, and I've that all disparities is attributable to discrimination, like that, but a conservative. not just that, not just a conservative that. conservative is the not only just, person, not just, I want to know why, why is it that conservatives- I guess he's trying to make it seem like all matter, like a black person stubs their toe, and that's because of racism. Like, I think he's trying to, the straw manning on that part is like, all matter of discrimination, all forms of discrimination actually comes from- uh you know uh, a prior historical context i think that's what he's like trying to bastardize it into he didn't do a really good job of describing that um he he wasn't able to get that fucking straw man off uh i think but you know um for example if a black person stubs their toe on a lego um that's that's racism that's not racism actually okay well yeah that's not no one made that argument that's not a thing you know what i mean um which, by the way, in and of itself, for all the debate perverts in here, uh, you guys know me as the guy who's uh, incapable of debating and refuses to because he, he can't face the truth. But, like, you know, that's a logical fallacy. Um, what Ben Shapiro is doing and the reason why he is a decent debate pervert in comparison to all of those other debate perverts is that he is able to try to very quickly and swiftly rationalize a logical fallacy in an argument, Okay. Whether it be gish galloping, whether it be an argument absurdum, I think that's what it's called, right? Like, it's just, he fires off multiple logical fallacies and then tries to very quickly rationalize them uh, without their opponent understanding that they're doing that. And that's precisely why he's considered an extremely skilled, uh, rhetorically gifted debate pervert. Um, he strawmanned, and then he uh, engaged with the straw man by uh, pushing it to its logical extreme, that no other sane person would actually make an argument around. Um, our, our, yes, the, the reduction ad absurdum. Um, let's continue. So the only people who define it like that. Why, Why are conservatives? And I think that uh, our boy here did a pretty good job of, of stopping Ben in his tracks and saying, that's not true. Only conservatives are the ones who describe wokeism like that. The okay. only okay. people- Okay, okay, so we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to stop here because this is going nowhere. But What's up? I, I, we're, I'm gonna have to stop with this with you because this is going nowhere. All I'm going well, to say is this. To no, sum up, <coughs> it's not going nowhere. It's going to a place that you don't want it to go to because for the first time ever, you are dealing with someone who at the very least is able to say, you're wrong. Stop putting words in my mouth. This is what's actually going on. When you're not talking to a uh, college freshman that is flustered for being in front of a massive fucking audience for the first time ever with your pre-canned speech and your talking points that you have pre-established and honed for the past fucking 20 years that you've been doing this, that you got from the Heritage Foundation, you have to run away. And that's precisely what Ben is doing here. Mr. Freedom of Speech. Mr. Uh, I, I think all speech should, especially frustrating speech, should be allowed on college campuses, is straight up utilizing his position of authority in this circumstance to silence opposing speech because he could not do it. He could not deal with it. Many such examples exist. One of the immediate ones that comes to mind is the BBC interview that he had with, uh, with, with what's that old fucking Tory piece of shit's name? I mean, he fucking eviscerated Ben, but he is um, Andrew Neal. Andrew Neal, when Andrew Neal and Ben Shapiro were having a conversation and Ben Shapiro started calling Andrew Neal a, a liberal progressive. I mean, Andrew Neal uh, is, is not a progressive by any right. Um, we can watch that as well. He's Scottish, by the way. Okay, shut up. But he's not like that kind of uh, Scottish. 
Um, but yeah, here, let's see I, what I'm I just am trying I, to I, understand I your perspective. Right. Just Boo. He says, I'm just trying to see your perspective. And immediately the crowd starts booing. It seems as though Ben is on the back foot here. And for some reason, the crowd is not responding in a way where they would, uh, I don't know, side with who the intellectual giant is here. Because obviously, debate perverts love Ben Shapiro because he puts people on the back foot. Okay? Ben owns people in the free marketplace of ideas, right? That's why people love him. That's why he's the intellectual giant, the gladiator of the right in the marketplace of ideas. And yet here, his debate opponent is doing the same thing that that Ben does to other people and causing Ben to be flustered. And yet his audience is not reacting in a way that they normally would. They're not turning around and making compilation videos about this guy saying like he fucking owned him. They're not turning around and going, hmm, maybe Ben isn't all that right in this circumstance. And that's precisely why I always say debates are for, debates are pseudo intellectual wrestling, uh, WWE uh, for, for dumb people. I disagree. Stand your perspective. Is this? But, What's up? I, I, well, I'm gonna have to stop with this with you because this is going nowhere. All I'm going well, to say is this. To no, sum up, I, I just I, 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 to I, I understand your perspective. On a, just one more second. On a, it's, on you a, say on a, on a fundamental on a, a fundamental a, level, you're shifting definitions to avoid the consequences of your. Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Someone ran in and literally put their fucking hand physically on the microphone to stop this person's takes. They were so scary for this crowd of young conservatives to hear. They thought, wow, we can't have this person. We cannot have this person converse in this setting no longer. I mean, the things that he's saying, they are too hard to hear. That's crazy. That's wild. Let's run it again. Let's run that back. I want to see it again. All I'm going to say is this. To no, sum up, I, I just I, am I, trying I, to understand I, I your perspective. On it. One more. The five tier one gives sub 60 watts silver lining. He says, I, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I just want to hear your perspective. That's what he said. On a, it's, on you a, say on a, on a fundamental, on a, a fundamental okay. level, you're shifting definitions to avoid the consequences correct? of your own argument. And if the idea is. And now they're debating the efficacy of debates all of a sudden or whether or not this debate is happening. Look, look how quickly Ben Shapiro went back into a corner in the most Weasley fucking way he can, shifts the conversation to, well, you're actually not following the sanctity of, of uh, the, the pre-established debate confines that we have created. You are, not an, you are not an interlocutor that I would like to see no longer, sir. That's what he's doing because he's fucking Weasley and he's weaseling his little fucking way out of that conversation because he has nothing else to say. He's flustered. He's on the fucking back foot. He's backpedaling. And this kind of shit does make me really happy. I'm going to be honest. I, as much as I hate debate perverts, I personally love watching a debate pervert like this get demolished thoroughly, piece by piece. And anyone who says that this is like not a good example of what happens to a debate pervert on the back pedal is wrong. Ultimately, uh, you know, inconsequential. It's not actually uh, productive. No one in that room is going to ever second guess Ben Shapiro's takes or anything like that. But, uh, but, you know, it doesn't matter. It's good because it demoralized Ben. And I like that. It makes me happy because I'm fucking driven by spite, just like conservatives are. And, and, fi and, and, and final point. Speech. And final this point. Being and final point. If I you're going you to... Hold on. If you are also... Also, just final point to sum up there. Wow, a group of young Americans, young Americans, you know, youngest person in that crowd being like 55, uh, are, are celebrating the fact that someone was swiftly removed for the crime. And I mean the crime, the criminal act of trying to have a conversation with Ben Shapiro. Perhaps conservatives don't care about free speech after all. My, oh my, I am shocked. Let me tell you how shocking this is. Oh my lord. Final well, point I don't to know how I can follow that. Yeah, but, uh, one more. I just want to make, honestly, I want to make one final point to sum up there. 
if the idea is that traumas of the past invariably bleed down into the present, that does not explain. Now that he has like adequately silenced his opposition, who can actually retaliate or respond, he's going to then, most likely, I assume, misinterpret what he is saying and uh, add on additional straw men to that and then end up uh, attacking the straw man. Also, he's moving just away. Final they... point to sum up there. Yeah, you got him. You got him, brother. Final well, point I don't to sum up. I can follow that. Yeah, but, uh... one more. He's gonna, he's gonna do the shower uh, uh, boxing. That's what he's gonna do. You know when you, uh, you know when you're in the playground, okay? When you're at school, and you get fucking owned by the bully. Okay, and then later that night you're taking a shower and you're like, "What a fuck had like such a better take." That that's what he's gonna do. Okay, no, not shadow boxing, shower boxing. Okay, I used shadow boxing and shower thoughts and I combined them. Okay, because that's when you that's when your best ideas come to mind. When you're in the fucking shower and you're thinking like, "Man, if I only fucking told that bully like." You know, your mom sucked my dick or something. Everyone would be fucking clapping at the playground. God damn it. Yes, by the way, this is this is literally, I mean, this is incredibly specific because it's something that has happened to me. And I'm sure all of you guys have had, you know, similar thoughts. So anyway, no, you're gay. Yeah, that would have been exactly. That's like, yeah, exactly. No, you're gay. Boom. Fucking own, dude. <laughs> oh my god that would have popped off in like 1998 you know what i mean that's <laughs> owned <laughs> i'm gay well i sucked your dad's dick <laughs> what <laughs> oh man okay let's finish well, i just want to make honestly i want to make one final point to sum up there if the idea is that traumas of the past invariably bleed down into the present, that does not explain why certain groups that have been historically not only marginalized but slaughtered in mass genocide are some of the most successful groups in our society. Yeah, um, perhaps the continuation of systemic oppression did not extend in the same capacity to certain groups as it did to others, because they were not considered to be the backbone of labor in the same way that, like, uh, you know, chattel slavery happened um but of course you know he's just he's just straight up hitting that line that's cool that room is full of the easiest people to troll online as well oh yeah 100 percent. so if the idea is oh my god what a fit dude motherfuckers make fun of my fits but yeah, are you is. joking look at my boy here dude what is oh this is hurt dog this is hurt okay Straight up, what the fuck? Would you debate Ben Shapiro if you had the chance? I know you don't ever want to do debates, but that would be insane. No, I've always, I've always maintained the position that like, uh, I will debate clouded people. Straight up, I, I don't have a problem with that. What do you mean? I'll debate clouded people, or I'll debate for content, but I'm not gonna fucking do it for like every random Tom, Dick, and Harry who's gonna fucking try to activate and mobilize their community to fucking clip me out of context and like make a million YouTube videos out of it to be like, ha Hassan believes this position that he doesn't actually hold. And they do it anyway, even when I don't debate them. So I have, for the record, I have debated people. Um, I've debated people on television. I've debated some of the most prominent conservative speakers on that circuit. Um, they are all readily available. I've debated people on, at Politicon. I mean, guys, I, one of the last people I debated was almost the, the governor of California. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's, uh, that's, it's something that I'm not, like, against. Like, Tim Pool is a great. Liberals literally edited and twisted your debate with CT to make you look like you lost, so you're absolutely correct. Yeah, it's just, like, people, uh, at a certain point, I think that, um, at a certain point, I think that people don't even care about it. Like, the debate perverts circuit will straight up uh, distort and make reactionary debate opponents look better. If the idea is that past trauma always equals current inequality, or that my actions in, say, robbing a convenience store are attributable to bad actions that happened in Alabama in 1930, the answer to that is no. Don't rob... Wait, what? 
this current inequality, or that my actions in, say, robbing a convenience store are attributable to bad actions that happened in Alabama in 1930, the answer to that is no. Don't rob the convenience store. The only way... Dude, holy shit. Just say the N-word, Ben. What the fuck? Yo, he just said, like, you know, black people are criminals. <laughs> Straight up, like... That's awesome. <laughs> he just Ben literally he, he's just no holds barred. He got like he got like a little bit of pushback and he literally was like, I'm going there now. <laughs> That's crazy. This is perhaps the furthest you can go. For the record, this is the furthest you can fucking go without like actually saying the N-word. This is like when a when a 14 year old in a in a Call of Duty lobby is like losing the game and just says the N word over and over again. That's Ben's version of that. He's doing exactly that. He's emotionally and mentally stunted and is 100% doing that without actually saying it. He's just like, oh, well, you know, um, <laughs> uh, past trauma does not mean you can rob a convenience store, black people. That's what he's saying. And is of course, like, uh, ironically, an incredibly liberal analysis uh, that is completely fucking devoid of any sort of materialist uh, perspective uh, uh, attached to it, okay? Crime, specifically crime of that magnitude, of that sort, manifests in environments uh, uh, that have been held back due to, uh, due to their material conditions, due to the historic uh, subjugation that people have been um, people have been uh, forced to exist in. He just basically went into, you know, only black people cause crimes and they blame prior wrongs for it. I'm glad that that guy can respond to this dumb take. Oh, wait, he's gone, lol. Exactly. The way they are going to be able to break the chain of history is to make good decisions. What, what people on the left don't like to talk about is actual solutions. What they like to do is bitch about problems that existed 60 years ago and blame those. Oh, dude, he hit the fucking Gary V note. Huh, he, he said bitch. Failed solutions. What okay, they like this is not a new take, and this is not a unique take, and this is not even a correct take, which, you know, you can say about pretty much everything that conservatives fucking recycle. The only thing they recycle, which is, you know old talking points he literally is just doing the exact same thing that they do all the fucking time which is like black people are bitching about uh you know racism racism ended when uh, slavery ended okay maybe not racism ended when you know martin luther king ended racism uh, during the civil rights movement okay maybe not racism ended when obama became president like that's just that's just the most common fucking right-wing retaliation no analysis whatsoever about like why intergenerational poverty uh, is it, it plays a significant role in the development of certain communities and how that still has staying like lasting impact in contemporary society. And every single time you have you try to have that conversation, they turn around and go, no, they're going to rely on the pre-existing white supremacist attitudes that the audience holds on to as well, especially a conservative audience like that. The pre-existing attitudes that they have about, pre-existing white supremacist attitudes they have about like black people cause crimes, they're scary. And uh, then they complain about it and say, well, we had no other choice. We're doing crimes because, um, you know, slavery. Every single sociological school of thought agrees with you. Material conditions is what will likely be the, uh, li what will be the likelihood of crime occurring? Yes. And it's not even new, like fucking ancient Greece, they had this argument. Like, people understood this concept that crime is a consequence of poverty all the fucking way back in, like, ancient Greece. And conservatives back then were advocating against that as they are now. So not much has changed. It's pretty simple. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a, a reductive uh, analysis here that, like, liberals can comprehend and maybe even conservatives if they work their brain a little bit, okay? It's either intrinsic or extrinsic factors that have held black people back, okay? If you believe they're intrinsic factors, you believe that black people are somehow genetically different than white people and or Jewish people or other historically marginalized communities, okay? And that's why they are not able to pick themselves up by their bootstraps. If you think that it's 
extrinsic factors, then you understand that structural racism exists. Which, by the way, the intrinsic factors are, that's just literally you're racist. You're just trying to uh, add an intellectual patina to your white supremacist attitude when you say that. You try to say, it's not race, it's culture. Okay, why does black culture, why is black culture impacted? Uh, black culture is the most popular, most successful, most commoditized culture. Why doesn't it impact white people in the same way? Ultimately, you always go back to some kind of difference between black people and, and white people in this circumstance. There's more white people that listen to rap music than there are black people. If that's the case, then, then fucking white people would be impacted in a similar capacity if that was culture. Wait, what? I mean, it's true. It's literally true. There are more white people than there are black people in America. So, of course, there are more white people that listen to rap music than there are black people. It's the most successful fucking genre on the planet. What do you mean by impact? What I mean by impact is this. Conservatives can't any longer say black people are genetically inferior and that's why they are uh, in... Uh, they're in destitute poverty struck conditions that was the original talking point okay all the way until the fucking 60s okay straight up go back to any fucking circumstance go back to the jim crow era go back to reconstruction go back to any era and you will hear from conservatives openly state that black people were genetically different and therefore inferior and therefore uh, uh servile or therefore aggressive and angry okay now when it became inappropriate to openly state that then they moved on to uh different ways of saying that same thing they tried to again go back to the science and justify it through the bell curve or uh they tried to say well it's their culture it's their culture that is the reason why black people are, are <clears throat> uh, in, in worse material uh, circumstances than white people. But if that was the case, then all facets that black culture impacts, which is the most commodified culture, would get the same kind of uh, setbacks. This is, of course, if you even believe that culture can dictate your material conditions and not vice versa. I personally believe I am closer to Gramsci's uh, attitude on this, where I, I think that it's more so a reflection of the base uh, rather than the other way around. Um, I do think that culture is just a mirror held up to uh, our, our conditions. Here. I mean, this is a political strategy as well here. I'm about, you're about to hear the N-word a lot, but here is Lee Atwater's famous admission in 1981. This is not in 1981, if I'm not mistaken, but maybe. In 1981, the legendary brutal campaign consultant Lee Atwater was working in Ronald Reagan's White House when he was interviewed by Alexander Lamy. In this audio, made for public the first time ever, Atwater lays out how Republicans can win the vote of racists without sounding racist themselves. Here's how I would approach that issue as a, as a, as a statistician or a political scientist, or no, as a psychologist, which I'm not, is, is how abstract you, you handle the race thing. In other words, you start out, in, and now y'all aren't quoting me. Right, you start out in 1954 by saying nigger, nigger, nigger. By 1968, you can't say nigger. That hurts your backfire, so you say stuff like uh, forced busing, states rights and all that stuff and you're getting so abstract now you're talking about cutting taxes and all of these things you're talking about are totally economic things and the byproduct of them is blacks get hurt worse than whites and subconsciously maybe that is part of it i'm not saying that but i'm saying that if it is getting that abstract and that coded uh that, that we that we're doing away with the racial problem one way or the other uh you follow me because obviously sitting around saying uh, we want to cut taxes, we want to cut this, and we want is much more abstract than, than even the busing thing. Uh, and a hell of a lot more abstract than never knew, you know. So I, any way you look at it, race is coming on the back burner. So there it is. That is, yes, saying the quiet part out loud. It's just, you don't say race anymore, you say culture, okay? You don't say the N-word anymore, you say we need to do busing. 
Uh, all right, we need to call busing force busing. That's integration. That's an anti-integrationist position, which, by the way, our current president also held and championed from the Democratic Party back in the day. But that's besides the point. You know, uh, Jim Crow Joe, uh, the, the architect of the, crim the crime bill that uh, eviscerated black communities. That's a totally separate discussion, separate conversation. Still has not legalized marijuana at the federal level. I don't know why. Fucking dumbass. Anyway, again, totally irrelevant to the conversation at hand, but... But this is the playbook, and that's precisely what Ben Shapiro does here, basically when he uh, gets lost in the sauce and uh, immediately uh, immediately applies a straw man, says uh, Jewish people have uh, overcome the historic wrongs of the Holocaust and are significantly more successful by and large than black people who still haven't been able to overcome the consequences of slavery uh, or whatever position he thinks racism ended in the United States of America. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Depending on who Ben is talking to, you know, racism could have ended, like I said, in the, the uh, founding of the uh, country. Okay. It could have ended in the abolition of slavery or it could have ended in uh, uh or it could have ended during i don't know fucking uh, the civil rights movement or when barack obama was president uh so depending on that uh ben will tell you ben will change his argument but ultimately the the main point still remains which is that black people were not able to pick themselves up by their bootstraps because um they are just somehow different uh, he won't say that they're inferior genetically or something. He'll just say, oh, it's the culture. Why is the culture impacting them differently? Oh, well, uh, uh, I don't know. It's just the culture. So when you have a conversation with people like this, you should always ask them that. <coughs> um, what I like to do is bitch about problems that existed 60 years ago and blame those for failures to solve them now. Which, by the way, bitch about problems that existed 60 years ago. Got it. So he, he is of the mindset that, you know, civil rights movement is when it ended. Um, racism ended in America. It was made illegal. So that is the exact same bullshit that you hear from any dumbass conservative at a fucking bar. Oh, they're bitching about problems from 60 years ago and think that that justifies them stealing now. You know what I mean? It's like, that's just straight up racist bullshit. Okay? Straight up. Try to brace his bullshit. You know, anytime you have a conversation with a conservative, which, you know, I don't suggest you do, but if you're, if you must, uh, you can always use the example that, well, there's more crime committed by white people. Why aren't we, you know, what the fuck? What's their excuse then? What are the, what's the excuse that white people are using for the more crime that they commit? Because there's more white people, you know, have fun with the statistics. There's just more white people in America. So obviously there's more crime committed by white people in America. You know what I mean? So, and then, and then watch them try to describe it or, or, or explain it to you. And then be like, why doesn't this apply to uh, black people then, this analysis? Point to a racist law and I will fight right alongside you to get it off the books. I'm not racist is what Ben Shapiro says all the time. But that exact same logic could literally be extended to grandfather clauses, uh, as we have talked about many, many times over in this broadcast, which did not directly and explicitly state that if you are a black person, you are uh, subjected to incredibly complicated literacy tests or a poll tax or both. But instead, if your grandfather was not able to vote, then you are subjected to uh, incredibly complicated literacy tests and, and uh, you know, poll taxes. That in and of itself never explicitly stated that, uh, you know, black people are not allowed to do that. So you could literally expand on that exact, you use that exact same article, direct, uh, uh, the exact same argument directly on Jim Crow laws doesn't work like that and you know it doesn't as the ratio between white slash black in terms of crime actually puts black as high criminal but only by a fraction you can't just outright say just because a country has more means more crime against the minimum no i was telling them to use inappropriate arguments is what i'm saying i openly admitted that that's a that's not a correct argument to use like i'm saying that that's yeah you're you can they'll turn around and say well what about the per capita and then you can actually have a conversation about it by being like well the per capita crime rates that we are talking about are actually not real conviction rates but instead 
uh, rates of, uh, of of arrests, and uh, we already know that black communities are policed more. They get longer sentences for the same kinds of crimes that white people commit. As a matter of fact, white people literally fucking commit uh, uh, like drug crimes at a higher rate than black people do, and yet black people get longer sentences consistently and are also pursued further for uh, such acts, uh, such criminal acts. Uh, therefore, there is a disparity, uh, dis uh, discrepancy, and a disparity in sentencing, um, which greatly beefs up the 1350 argument, which in and of itself is a cyclical argument. Regardless, you can't use that to justify over-policing black communities. Uh, we don't, for example, decide that like every man is automatically a criminal because 90% of crimes are committed by men, or we don't assume that every white man is a pedophile because the overwhelming majority of pedophiles are white men. Uh, that's not how this works, but for some weird reason, racism is so deeply baked into your fucking brain, to your inner core in the way that you exist, that you literally use that as a justification for over-policing black people because you know black people are arrested more uh for for crimes um so therefore we should over police black communities well that's precisely the reason why they're getting arrested more for crimes so there you go once again i can debate pervert like the best of them i just choose not to because i personally think it's fucking stupid um so don't ever let one of those fucking YouTube debate perverts tell you that I am not capable of doing that. After all, most of them came from my fucking community and now think that they're better. But even if there wasn't a disparity in sentencing, for the record, even if there wasn't a, dispar dispar uh, a disparity in sentencing for black people and white people, what you also have to comprehend, once again, is material conditions, okay? I just want to clarify because I didn't know you say men commit 90% of the crime. I think it's like something crazy, isn't it? What percentage of crime is committed by me? Sorry, it was uh, males accounting for 80.1% of uh, violent crimes. And 73.8% of all arrested people are males. It's also um, the FBI statistics. This is the same FBI crime statistics. But yeah. Um, you have to ask people, like, why are black people uh, and, and white people that are on even footing uh, economically, why are the next of kin in uh, a black family and a white family, when you look at a black family and a white family in, like, even uh, socioeconomic conditions, why is the black family's next of kin less likely to uh, engage in upward social mobility the same way that a white family is? Why do you think that's the case? <sighs> Their answer ultimately has to revolve around intrinsic factors or extrinsic factors. If it's intrinsic factors, then that's racist, okay? That black people are somehow different than white people. If it's extrinsic factors, then they have to admit racism, like structural racism, systemic racism exists. And it's the truth. That is actually the truth. And motherfuckers that say the culture argument always, or the fatherlessness argument always, once again, you have to ask them, why? How is it somehow devoid of the, the material conditions that they're subjected to, okay? Do you think that uh, the likelihood, um, look at exoneration rates, blacks are exonerated at much higher rates. Yeah, that's that too. That's an important one too. Pardons, or not pardons, but uh, fucking uh, the exonerations as a consequence of new evidence coming out, uh, super duper high for black people on, uh, especially on... Um, Black people stated for execution in prison. Welfare state required fatherless homes. Yeah, dude, Thomas Sowell. And yet it still doesn't impact white people in the same way. It's so strange. But only black people. Or maybe there was a, there was a worse fucking consequence other than the welfare state, which is, um, first of all, that should not have existed regardless. That kind of condition is fucking psychotic. Uh, and it should not exist. Uh, it should not have ever existed. Like the whole idea that like only single uh, family homes uh, were, were going to get some kind of welfare. Uh, stupid. But um, but not only that, but why doesn't it impact white people in a similar capacity? Just ask them that. Like it just always ask. Like why? So what happened? Why didn't it hit white people in the same way? The welfare state. Don't you think that there's a larger reason for that? A more direct reason for that, for example, uh, one in five black children in this country have at least one parent that's incarcerated, and that rate goes up to one in 42 for white people, 
which by the way is still fucking insanely high don't get me wrong but goddamn that has been incarcerated do you think that that plays a role in single family uh housing also um black fathers not being in the house alongside the black mother does not mean that black parents are not involved in a child's life either that in and of itself is also if i'm not mistaken uh, a, a relatively white supremacist attitude that goes back to, you know, black people being promiscuous and animalistic and primal and all that uh, racist shit. 